，小妹，啊、um, ，你生意怎样啊？好不好啊 ？In front of him, I burst into tears. <laughs> Hello, uh, I'm Eris Chan, the founder of the Coco Rice. Our first flagship store is at Tiong Baru Hawker Centre, and this is our second outlet at One Pungko Hawker Centre. So both of the stores actually selling different products. At Tiong Baru, we are selling lupi nasi lemak, and at One Pungko Hawker Centre, we are selling nasi kanda. Not many people know nasi kanda. Even I asked a few of my Singaporean friends, I said, do you know what is nasi kanda? They never heard of it before. Unless they've really been to Penang before and they tried that food before. Mm. I would say majority don't know what is nasi kanda. Uh, so it's a challenge for me. But also it's a, that's also one of the reasons why I want to introduce nasi kanda. Because not, not many people know. So that they, they can try something new. I came from a small hometown uh, called Tatlo Intan. Since young, I love to eat. My passion is food. Okay, when I started to work in Singapore, the passion for work is never dies. Uh, it's always in me. Then I was one to sell nasi lemak. First of the reason is because I love nasi lemak, and my husband also love nasi lemak. Then uh, because I'm from Malaysia, I find the nasi lemak between Malaysia and Singapore slightly different in terms of the sambal. Uh, in Singapore, it's more to the sweeter side. Uh, then after that, uh, the selection of side dishes also different. Another reason is because I think nasi lemak is a food where everybody can accept. Uh, not only Chinese, it's everyone's food. So from young to old, uh, regardless religions, uh, regardless race. So I, I want to introduce a more Malaysian style nasi lemak uh, in Singapore. That's why I choose nasi lemak. All this while I want to venture into f &B. So I need to find a, a startup point where I can low risk and can gain some experience from that. So I choose home base and at the same time doing my, my, my work like, during daytime. So I will just accept the orders during weekend or during my, when I'm free, okay? So I started with Nasi Lama. So in my mind, I want to sell this product. But I was thinking if I'm going to start with home base, how I'm going to stand out from the rest because it's very hard because nasi lemak is a very popular food in Singapore and we have many famous stores in Singapore selling nasi lemak as well. So on one fine day, I was browsing through the Facebook and I saw one very interesting post in Facebook. It's actually nasi lemak cake. It is interesting enough to let me go down all the way to KL just to purchase the cake and try it. So I did make the journey with my husband go down all the way to KL and buy the cake. So after that, I tried and said it's a very interesting idea. So hey, I, at that time, I searched around and said, hey, this idea in Singapore don't have yet. It's very new. So then, hey, why don't I introduce my nasi lemak in a cake form in Singapore? So that's how I started. Uh, my, my sister, she cooked very good nasi lemak. So from there, I learned her recipe. Then also, I go to YouTube recipe, but I, I did the research myself, R&D myself. Actually, it took me quite some time because on and off, because this is my part time. So from there, I innovated it and I created my own version of nasi lemak cake. During the pandemic period, it was a huge retrenchment everywhere. Lucky or unlucky, I was one of them. I used that opportunity to fully home base at the time for one year. To be honest, when I started Nasi Lemak Market, it's not easy. Not everybody can accept it because it's a new product. So when I really started it right, the business is very low. Actually, no, nobody dare to try this product. So uh, after that, I, I did uh, approach Chef Louis at the time. So I asked, uh, I have a new product, Nasi Lemak Market. Would you like to try and give us some feedback? So I'm very lucky and very happy. They said, okay, you can send to our office. So I sent to the office and let them try. So on that day itself, Sabri featured us already. So I'm very glad. Lah. So from that, it's a, it's a turning point for us, to be honest, for my home base business, Nasi Lemak Cake. So from there, people get to know more and more about Nasi Lemak Cake from there. And I did receive quite a good comment. Lah. Some of the clients said, hey, why don't you sell something like uh, we can eat every day? Because Nasi Lemak Cake, occasionally, we can event then we can order from you, but why don't you create something that we can order from you, like normal food, something like that. So from there, slowly, slowly, I was thinking, because home base, it got limitation. Everything is small scale. Mm, I think, okay, maybe it's time 
uh, for me to venture out from home base to hawker, right? Uh, it's a big transition for me. It's really a huge challenge because everything is different from scale of production, um, the stress, manpower, everything. So you, everything you need to juggle at one time. Where I don't really have this experience. Even cook the rice, uh, I need to start all over again from the basic to, to do R&D on how to cook the rice in, in bulk. From the taste, right, the texture, and if the rice cook or not, Wow, everything is like I need to start from zero when I go to hawker. So it's really huge challenge. I stop. I purposely stop my business for four days just to R and D the rice. When I just started, everything basically from opening the store, doing the cooking, preparation, selling, serving clients, to at the end of the day clean the store, clean up, wrap up everything. It's almost 10 p.m. so everything is with me and one part-timer. For us, right, um, we want to introduce something different. Uh, we don't want to be another Nasi Lemak store. And I just started at Yong Baru. So mostly everything is by myself. With the help of, of one part-timer, lah. she will just help me on the sales part and also uh, she will left at 2 p.m. Then after that, I continue until 10 p.m. But at that time, uh, not really a lot of people come to our store to eat, to be honest. Um, and it's quite challenging at that time. So after all the hard work, not much people come to your store to eat. It's a bit demoralizing. So I remember one time when when everything uh, during lunch time, like, no more crowd. I go to the uh, fish store, got lunch from the uncle. So the uncle asked me. Hey, Xiao Mei, um, is how good how good? In front of him, I burst into tears. <laughs> then he was shocked with my reaction. Then he said, Ayah, Nen Qing Ren, we are sick now. Come on, come on. Uh, you will eat it. You will eat So, from that is a big encouragement for me. And after that, I slowly, slowly uh, see more clients come to my store. And the most dissatisfaction for me is when the clients come to my store and say, uh, <laughs> they purposely come back to my store after they eat. They say, hey, your nasi lemak is very good. Very good, like, keep it up. Eh. So, that, so that quite a number of clients come back to our store to give me this feedback and also review at Google and Facebook. So this gives me the huge encouragement for me to keep on, keep on moving. Yeah, because of them, more and more people get to know us, they come to try our, our food and they, some they find it good so they keep on continue and they introduce friends and yeah so yeah so I, I'm really thankful for all this so it's a journey for me la. but if you ask me it's a tough journey definitely it's tough if you ask me do you <laughs> give me a choice if I still want to get myself into this all over again I would still say yes it's even though tough, but the satisfaction, um, encouragement from the clients well, is, is different. But I will say, if you have the passion, it is worth it. If you think you are doing something right, yeah, just, just keep doing it. And hopefully, um, Monday, more and more people will accept yeah, what, what you are doing.